Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are doing another video in our series of quick little math challenges. So my daughter and I, we were actually looking through some uh, test math Olympiad questions. And one of the questions they had was, if you're given a triangle like this blue one here, the question is, what's the radius of the largest circle that you can fit inside the triangle? So sometimes this is referred to as an inscribed circle or uh, an inscribed inside of a triangle, but that's the idea, right? We are just trying to find out what's this radius of this circle inside this. And again, here's a static picture, but you can imagine that as these lengths change, as you might be able to see in this movie over here on the side of your screen, uh, you can see that the radius of that triangle changes and the geometry, at least to me initially, it was isn't initially immediately obvious. So I think it takes a little bit of thought to think about. So let's talk about this right now. For now, why don't we go ahead and assume that this is a right triangle. In fact, this is how the problem was posed, um, is you have a right triangle here, and then they gave you two sides. They give you a side length A and a side length B. And then they ask, given that piece of information, can you find the radius of this red circle? Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and see what we can do. One thing that is interesting is if you notice, we can draw, there's multiple, in fact, there's infinite radii of this circle, but there's three in particular that are kind of interesting. So if we take a radius from the center of the circle and come out to where the circle touches the triangle, I think everyone will agree that this is actually a right angle, right? So I'm gonna use purple for that. Furthermore, if we take another radius from the center to this other edge where it touches. Also, same thing, right angle. Let's use orange for that third one. And then, uh, or excuse me, for the second one. And then the third one, let's do the same thing. There's another radius down here, which comes and makes a right angle, okay? And what makes this interesting is all of these have a distance r, right? And again, this is what we're looking for, is we want this distance r to figure out um, the radius of the circle, right? Okay, so now this is where the, uh, the intuition and the nice kind of uh, trick comes in. If you take a look at the triangle from this center to here and here, in other words, let me go and sketch this out maybe with a little bit of a dashed line, right? There's this, and in fact, maybe just to complete this, I'll go like this, right? There's a triangle right here, okay? Also, you can look at this green one, same thing. Let's go ahead and make another triangle like this. Okay, and then finally for the orange one, there's a third triangle like this, right? And I think maybe to make this a little bit easier, maybe we can try to like maybe cross hatch this area a little bit. So here's the orange area, right? Here's the green area. Okay, and then here's the purple area. So we see that the overall large original triangle, it's really made up of these three triangles. And now what's really fascinating is if you look at this, let's look at this purple triangle to start. I think everyone will agree that this thing has a base and a height of radius r. So first of all, we gotta get this length, this base, and we can see that that's just the hypotenuse of this triangle. So first, let's go ahead and get this angle, or the, the distance c. So I think via Pythagorean theorem, right? I think everyone will agree that this distance c is just square root of a squared plus b squared. Right? Okay, now what we can do is let's go ahead and look at this purple triangle and we can say that the area of the purple triangle, let's call it AP, right? Isn't that just one half times the base, which is C, times the height, which is R, right? Perfect, and let's do the similar thing for this orange triangle. triangle. Let's look at the area of the orange triangle, right? That same thing, it's one half times the base, which in this case is A, right? times its height, which is r, right? That's the height. And then lastly, for a green triangle, the area of the green is same thing. It's one half times its base b times the height, which is that radius r that we're interested in, right? So now what we can say is, uh, let's go ahead and put all of these together, and we are gonna combine and say that the area of the total triangle, it's just what? It's the area of the purple plus the area of the orange plus the area of the green triangles all put together, right? Awesome, let's actually save this as equation one because later on I think we're gonna to wanna to take a closer look at this, okay? Let's go ahead and substitute what we know. So the area of the total original blue triangle, right? 
Same thing, can't we just say that's also one half times its base, which is this B, times its height, which is A. So here's the area of the total blue triangle. And then we have expressions for all of these three subtriangles right here, right? Um, so area purple, this is one half CR plus one half um, AR plus one half BR, right? So I think we can simplify a lot of this at this point, and we're basically just solving for R, right? So these all cancel. Um, I think I can write this whole thing as just pull the R out, and this becomes A plus B plus C, right? Okay, is equal to BA. Okay, let's just go ahead and divide both sides by A plus B plus C, divide by A plus B plus C, and we basically end up with our answer, right? So the radius of this guy, of that R that we're looking for, it's just, um, a times B all over A plus B plus C, right? So that was pretty fascinating. In fact, let's go ahead and look at an example with some numbers. Um, and uh, actually my daughter worked this out. She came up with some numbers that actually come out surprisingly good and easy. So I think A was, uh, what was this, was this three? I think it was three, right? And then B was four. Okay, so if you're given these two things, you know, this is three units, this is four units. Okay, let's go work out what is C. Okay, let's go and plug that in our Pythagorean theorem. This is what, three squared plus four squared. So this is square root of nine plus 16. This is square root of 25. So that is just five. <coughs> so yeah, that was awesome that she got that number to work out really, really nice. And uh, I think we're ready to rock. So let's just plug it into our equation down here for the radius of the circle. So the radius of the circle now, it's just A times B. So what is this? Three times four all over three plus four plus five. And what's fascinating about this is I think, what the numerator is 12, what is this? This is actually also 12. So look at this, like I am shocked how well she got these numbers to, to, to fall out. So in this case, <laughs> this radius is just unity is one, right? Awesome. So this is, it was, it was a really interesting uh, way to solve this problem, but uh, we wanted to take this one step further, right? The math Olympiad problem was, was a right triangle. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, what happens if you don't have a right triangle? Um, this is still a scalene triangle, right? Every angle or every side is different, but there's a right angle. What if there was no right angles in this? Okay, so I've done my best to kind of sketch a uh, non-right triangle, something like this. So again, you've got AB. Now let's assume that you're also given the side C um, as well. And again, I tried to sketch in the circle that we're looking at here. And again, we're looking for the radius. It's the exact same thing. And in fact, this exact same analysis still holds. In fact, right, there's still going to be a radius here, which makes a right angle, right? Because this circle is still tangent to this line. And then same thing down below uh, the green one. It's, going to, it's just going to be a little bit different, right? It's just going to be a little bit angled differently. Um, and then the purple one like this, right? So all of this is still the same thing. You can still draw these three triangles and you can cross hatch them in the exact same fashion that we did earlier. So if you think about this long enough, this is still exactly valid and you still have an orange, a purple and a green triangle making up the larger original triangle, right? So in other words, what's fascinating is that um, okay, let's, let's modify some of our notes here. Okay, we don't need Pythagorean theorem any longer, right? Because we're given C at length, but these three equations are still valid, right? The, equa the area of the purple, it's still one half base times height, right? Because the height is still the radius and you still got this nice right angle. It all works out. Now, equation one is also still valid, right? It's just saying that the area of the overall blue triangle is made up of the three areas of the little triangles, right? Now, the only thing we got to update now is here. The area of the large total blue triangle, it's no longer one half B times H, right? We got to update this. Okay, so here's where this is actually kind of interesting. Um, if you remember, there's actually a formula for this, right? It's Heron's formula, right? Which gives you the area of pretty much any triangle, right? Let me just make sure I got this right. Um, this is now square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, okay? And in this case, where S 
is basically the semi-perimeter or the perimeter, right? A plus B plus C. That's the perimeter of this triangle, but you got to divide this by two. Okay. So there you have it. So again, all of this still works. So now I can plug in Heron's formula here for the area of the total triangle, right? So this is now square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. So again, we've got everything we need. Let's put this, let's put these halves back in because now we can't really cancel these as easily. But still, we can now solve for R, right? That's all we're trying to do. So we're just going to come up with a different expression for R in this particular case. Okay, so let's see, what is this going to work out to? I'll leave the uh, algebra for the reader. But if you do this, you're going to basically get R is equal to uh, 2 times uh, this area, square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, and then all over A plus B plus C. Okay? So again, interesting. We just have a different expression for R, but it's still, you tell me A, B, and C, and then I'll get you the radius. So again, let's look at some numerical examples. Um, let's actually here. I think we can go like this. Let me erase all these old numbers. Let's keep A and B the same. And in this case, we're going to use a C value of about 6.36. Um, this is about the value that yields an angle of uh, about 130 degrees. So this angle here is about 130 degrees. So it actually does kind of look like the picture that we drew um, there on the board. So again, uh, running through some of these calculations. So uh, let's see, let's get the semi-perimeter of this. This is just A plus B plus C all over two. And I think if you plug in all of these numbers, you get something like uh, about 6.68 something like that. And therefore, the area of the total triangle uh, given by, where was it, by Heron's formula right here, I think you could get that to come out to be about 4.59-ish, uh, something like that. And then finally, if you plug in your R calculation, just again, stick in all of our numbers here, you get an R of 0 0.688, something like that, right? And um, yeah, and in fact, let me show you a movie of what this looks like. In fact, I was running these calculations through um, a quick MATLAB script to animate as uh, you vary that angle. So you can see, yeah, this actually checks out. It looks like it's working for all of these angles that we're showing here in the movie. So um, yeah, I think it's a good spot to leave it. Just wanted to do a quick little video on a uh, little math challenge slash math Olympiad question that I thought was kind of interesting. And uh, hopefully this helps out and uh, you find it interesting as well. So if that was fun, um, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me continue making these videos and the new videos come out every Monday. So hopefully I'll catch you at a future discussion and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.